Hi Cub Scouts, welcome to your adventure. My name is Jen Martin and I'm with the Four Rivers District. I'm actually the Four Rivers District Day Camp Director and we're awfully sad that we couldn't hold day camp this year, but we got together and we put together these adventure boxes. I'm actually gonna be doing two adventures today, sort of a combo video, one for the lions and one for the tigers. Um, they both cover similar items. Um, they're really the foundation of scouting. The one for the lions is called Lion's Honor and the adventure for the tigers is called Good Nights. So let's get to it. Um, in your adventure box, you should receive a couple of things. And for these adventures, you should have two things applicable. Uh, the first one is a package of a challenge coin. It's your oath coin. And if you take it out of the package, it has the scout oath on one side and the um, 12 points of the scout law on the other side. The second item you should receive is your is a card. Apologize for my Zoom background. Um, and this has a scout oath and law and the scout slogan and the scout motto. Also in your adventure box should have been your worksheets. So let's take a look at those. I am doing this video through Zoom. I'm gonna be sharing my computer screen to kind of walk through these requirements um, for your earning. Um, so let's get to it. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna take a look at the requirements. So this is um, the adventure workbook um, packet that you should receive for the Lion's Honor. And we'll look through these requirements. So the first one is about the Cub Scout sign. We're gonna talk about the Cub Scout motto the Cub Scout salute, and kind of go over some of these other things. And so that's, the, that's it for the lion's honor. And then we'll move into the tiger adventure, and this is called Good Nights. Um, so in here, we're gonna go over the scout law, um, which one, you know, we're gonna talk about one and talk about why is that important. Um, what would a knight have in that um, scout law point? and go through the requirements um, of this packet. So like I said, this is sort of a combination um, video, um, all really groundwork for in the foundation of scouting. Um, so we'll actually start off with the lion's honor first and the um, tigers, you know, you're, this is also applicable. Um, so the first requirement says, show the Cub Scout sign and tell what it means. So let's look. So the Scub Scout sign is made with the right arm held high straight up above the shoulder with the index and middle fingers forming a V. The other fingers are held down by the thumb. It's a sign the Cub Scouts use all over the world. And what do these mean? The two raised fingers stand for the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. So when we put our signs up, we're doing it just like this. So we have the two points one for the scout oath and one for the scout law. The fingers look like um, wolf ears and that's just to show that we're ready to listen. So in sometimes in your pack meetings or den meetings, you know, your adult leaders might put this up and stay very quiet. And that's to give everybody the chance to, um, you know, stop talking, be silent and see what is going on. They might be providing instructions or something along those lines. So what I want you to do is, you know, practice. Let's see, can you do the scout sign? It's pretty easy, right? And when you do this, it's a little hard for me to show sitting down, but you're gonna make sure you hold your arm way up. So you're gonna keep your right arm held high and straight up over your shoulder with those fingers up just like so. So when someone says, what is a scout sign or let's do the scout sign, you know what that is. You're gonna raise your arm up real hard and tall, keep that elbow straight and then have your scout sign. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's take a look at the next thing. So the next um, requirement is the Cub Scout motto. And you know, there's actually two different mottos we sometimes use in scouting. And this is asking about the Cub Scout motto. So the Cub Scout motto is do your best. And you can see on my slide here, over here, um, my Zoom background says do your best. So what does that mean? That means that whatever you do, if you're doing an activity, that you're just putting your best self forward. You know, you're doing the best you can to accomplish whatever that may be. It could be um, a game, it could be a craft, um, 
So you're just doing the best you can to complete that. Now on your card that you received in your box, it does show the scout motto. So the scout motto is kind of the overall for all of BSA and that motto is called be prepared. And what does that mean? So in addition to doing your best, you always wanna be prepared for what situation you may be in. So be prepared. So think, what if you're going on a camp out, you wanna be prepared for rain. You may have looked up the weather and the weather looks great, you know, no rain the forecast, but let's be honest, every scout trip, it's always gonna rain, right? But regardless, if you looked up the weather and you're going to go camping, say on the Eastern Shore at Camp Tuckahoe, and it looks like a beautiful weekend, you still wanna be prepared in case it does rain. So you might pack your rain jacket um, in the event rain happens. That way you're prepared for that scenario or that situation. So let's look at the next item, the Cub Scout salute. And what does that mean? All right, I thought that I might have had that. Yep, here we go, Cub Scout salute. So the Cub Scout salute is made by joining their index and middle fingers of your right hand holding the other two fingers with your thumb. So it's similar to the Scout sign, the Cub Scout sign, but you're gonna have those fingers together and touch them to the cap of your visor or forehead above the eyebrow. So when you're doing that, if you don't have a hat on, you're raising it up right like this. So let's practice. Can you do that? Try to keep my wrist straight here. So you're gonna put it right up to your eyebrow. Now, if you're wearing your hat, I'll put my handy dandy Scout cap on here. When you're doing that, you're gonna raise it up right to the tip of your hat, like so. And you can see in this illustration here how they're doing it. The hand is held, the hand is held the same as the Cub Scout sign, like I said. So it's similar to the Cub Scout sign with the two fingers, but for the salute, you're putting them together. And you're either doing it against your cap if you're hat wearing one, or if you're not, then just right by your eyebrow. Now, we, how do we use a salute? So we use a salute um, when we're in uniform, like I am. So I'm in my, I actually have a venturing uniform, so I'm in my class A uniform. Um, so that's when we use it to salute the flag. So if we're in a ceremony, maybe your pack meeting, and the flags are coming in and they say Cub Scout salute, you know what to do now. You're gonna take your right arm, put it up there, and if you have a hat on, that's okay. If not, you can take your hat off and we'll pull it right up to our elbow. So as the flag comes in, you know, wherever you have your pack meetings, and they say Cub Scout salute, this is what you do. So you put it right up there. Now, if you're not in uniform, say you didn't wear your class A, you don't have your, you know, blue or khaki uniform on, and you just have a, maybe a pack shirt on. Um, the only time you salute like that is when you're in your actual uniform. Now, if you're just in a normal shirt, you'll do the traditional, you know, your hand over your heart. All right, we are rolling along here. So some of these other requirements are a little more difficult to do since we can't see each other in person and we're doing this over, um, you know, videos. So the next requirement says show teamwork and good sportsmanship by playing a game with your den. Now, I'm not sure um, if your PAC's meeting or DEN's meeting, and if you are, you may be meeting via Zoom or other methods, and you're probably not meeting in person. So, you know, you can do this at home with your family, maybe with your siblings, if you have a brother or sister and you're gonna play a game. Um, so show good teamwork and good sportsmanship. So teamwork would be, you know, working together to solve a problem. Maybe there is a riddle or something like that, and you're bouncing off ideas off your siblings or your other den mates if you're able to meet. Um, good sportsmanship is, you know, if someone is not feeling the greatest or they don't feel as confident in doing the game or the, you know, situation, that's just showing that you're, uh, that you're um, you know, wanna help them, good sportsmanship. So you wanna say that they're doing a great job regardless of their skill set. And then, um, so when you fill this out, if you do play a game, you can put in here what game you played. Maybe you played, I don't know, maybe you played a board game like Monopoly or Scrabble or something like that. Um, or you played a physical game. Maybe you played a game of basketball or soccer or catch in the backyard. 
And then an outing, you know, this can be done with your family as well. So, you know, let's think about an outing that you could go on. Maybe your family's going to do a camping trip with just you guys, you know, just your family members um, or something along like that. And that's really it for the lions. You know, you guys are the, the new ones in scouting. So this is really a good foundation um, and starting point for your lion badge. So we'll go ahead and move on into the good nights, which is the tiger adventure. And like I said, the lions, you're welcome to listen to this too, because it's very applicable um, and helpful for you as new scouts. So with this one, um, we have the scout law. So we're gonna talk about that. So a couple things. So where is two things we can look at here for the scout law. So the scout law is on the back of, or, you know, one side of your card here. And I'll just go ahead and read it to you. So it says a scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. And we call that the scout law. And on your challenge coin, you also have, it shows you all the 12 points of the scout law. So it repeats them just the same. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, all around. So let's practice saying that together, okay? You can use your card or your coin. So let's try to say the scout law. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Now, sometimes in our scout, our pack meetings, we'll say the scout law at the beginning of a ceremony. So like I said, we'll do the scout sign or the scout salute when the flag comes in and we do the Pledge of Allegiance. And then normally, you know, we might say the scout law after that. So you might hear the adult say, you know, next we'll recite the scout law. And that's what it is. So the next requirement says to explain to your den one of the 12 points of the scout law. So of course, like I said, we're not meeting in dens, but you can talk to your mom and dad or guardian or you know one of your family members about one of them. So let's pick one. Let's see. I like the point brave. So brave. So let's think about that. What do you think of the point, the scout point brave. I think of someone who is maybe strong, um, not afraid. Um, I want to say helpful too, but that's one of the other points. So someone who's strong and not afraid and So then for this requirement, you know, it's good nights. So we're thinking of nights like Knights of the Round Table or Medieval Nights, or if you've ever been to the Renaissance Festival, you've probably have seen nights such as jousting. Um, so why would you think a knight would have the same behavior as that point? So we're talking about the point brave. Why would you think, what, why would a knight have that same behavior? Well, let's think. They have to be strong and not afraid. So... I think that's applicable, you know, I think that applies to a knight, right? So they're strong, they're riding their horse, um, they are protecting people, and they have to stand up to someone who maybe is being bad, for example. Um, so I can see a knight being very brave, you know, they wear that armor, um, they have their shield, and, um, you know, they're really helping their community by being brave. The next thing we'll talk about is a code of conduct. So it says, if you've not already done so, make a code of conduct with your den that will describe how each person should act when you're all together. And if your den has a code of conduct, let's discuss with your den what updates it might need. Vote on what actions should go into your den code of conduct. So let's think about that. Again, you may be meeting with your den via Zoom or other, um, you know, media ways, since we can't meet in person. So we can either apply that to your den if you are meeting, or maybe we can think of a code of conduct maybe for like your family at home. You know, are there things that um, we should talk about that could apply to every member of your family? So one thing I wanted to talk about that kind of helps with this is like when we're at day camp, 
So when we're at day camp in person in the summer, going to all the stations, we do have a code of conduct. So I'm gonna pull up here the volunteer manual that is for our adult leaders and just kind of talk about the Cub Code, Cub code of Conduct that we have at camp. Um, a lot of den leaders will introduce this to you guys on your first day of camp, just so everybody knows all the rules and um, kind of sets the tone of having a good, fun week. So at day camp, the first one we say is cautious. So at day camp, I will be cautious. That means that you'll use the buddy system at all times. We don't want anybody getting lost. So whenever you go to the bathroom or you go to the camp nurse or you're you're traveling to maybe the trading post, you know, you always want to take a buddy with you. You don't want to go by yourself. We don't want to lose anyone at camp and we want to keep everybody very safe. Another thing with cautious is, of course, walk, don't run at camp. The only time you should really run at camp is if it's part of games, right? So if you're playing a game such as soccer or we're playing tag or tug of war, you know, you can run at that station, but Throughout camp, you shouldn't be running at the archery range, right? That's not safe. We also say don't throw dirt, rocks, sticks, or other objects. Because again, that's not being safe. So we just want everyone to be very cautious at camp. The next thing is we want to be courteous. And what does that mean? We really want to be respectful to all adults um, at all times. We want to be kind to one another. Don't hurt someone or on the inside or outside and wait your turn and don't interrupt. So being courteous is, again, being respectful and being kind to your fellow den mates. And maybe, you know, like at home, for example, you wanna be kind and um, to your siblings, if you have any siblings or mom and dad or a guardian, grandma, grandpa. And you don't wanna hurt someone on the inside or outside. So what does that mean? On the inside, you know, we don't wanna, that means words. We don't wanna say something that could be hurtful, like, saying something such as like, I don't like you. You know, that might not be the best way to express that. And we, if we say that, that could be very hurtful. If someone said, Miss Jen, I don't like you, you know, that really hurts me inside. So we wanna be courteous and think about our word choices and a better way to explain ourselves. Now, as far as outside, that's sort of obvious, but you know, we don't wanna hit, kick, bite, you know, do anything crazy like that. So don't hurt someone on the outside means, you know, we don't wanna, hit somebody or cause harm to them. And then wait your turn and don't interrupt. So again, being courteous, you know, if you guys are in line or um, taking turns on something, um, you know, we wanna wait for our turn and not cut the line, not be disrespectful and run to the front, even though you were in the back or the middle. So you just wanna be courteous and wait your turn in line. And the last, um, code of conduct at camp is clean. So we always say leave no trace. So what does that mean? Leave no trace is where, you know, you come to an area and it's clean, but we're going to leave it cleaner or better than we found it. So when you guys eat lunch at camp, um, you know, cleaning up all your trash that might have, but that you might have left over from lunch um, at your campsite. Maybe if you're going camping with your family and you may even see, you um, um, trash along, say, the river or at another campsite, you know, actually, you might want to pick that up. You know, someone left that there. That wasn't, they shouldn't have done that. So if you clean it up, that's just leaving no trace. Um, I kind of got ahead of myself there, but it says keep your surroundings in as good or better condition that you found them. So you might think of something like at home, you know, maybe cleaning your room or not, um, you know, throwing dirty clothes on the floor, for example, you know, I'm trying, you know, I'm getting at the parents there. Um, but, you know, you want to make every sure everything is clean. Um, you also want to keep your behavior clean. So no bad jokes or bad words or sticking your tongue out in a bad way. You could be silly sometimes, but you don't want to stick your tongue out like when you're mad or angry and you don't want to say bad words. So we want to be clean. So at day camp, that's a code of conduct that we follow. Um, so going back to our requirements, you know, we could think of code of conduct um, for maybe your home or your den. So we could think of, you know, maybe even similar, we could use similar things that we wanna be courteous. So you might wanna fill in here that you're gonna be courteous or nice at home. So you wanna make sure that you're being respectful to your parents, your guardians or grandma and grandpa or cousins, whoever. 
Um, so think about maybe what things you could do and maybe start a code of conduct at home. Now, if you are meeting with your den, you could talk about that in your meetings too. You know, what are some ways if we're meeting virtually, what does that look like as a code of conduct? You know, just me right now is sitting here talking to you, but if I had multiple people on the screen, you know, one way to just be courteous or nice or respectful is to just wait your turn to talk. You know, sometimes on these virtual things, a lot of people kind of talk over top of each other and it's a little hard to hear. So being courteous and kind, or just waiting your, you know, waiting your turn um, during your virtual meeting. So next time you meet with your den or maybe at home talking with your parents, you can kind of come up with a code of conduct um, that is a, you know, that helps there. Let's see, the next requirement. Oh, this is a good one. So this is talking about a den shield and a personal shield. So I'm gonna talk about just a couple examples, like what does that mean? What's a shield? Um, so I pulled up a couple things, and one thought I had was to kind of talk about medieval shields. So if you just do with your parents like a quick Google search and look up medieval shields, you can see they come in a variety of different um, shapes and sizes. And they may mean different things, um, but you can see how they're really different, you know, different shapes. This one's a circle. This one has a point at the top. And even on the outside, you know, they're all kind of made a different way. The other thing that could relate to this is like the, like your family crest. Um, if you Google family crest, you come with a whole bunch of different things and they all mean something. So maybe if you, um, have, if your family has ever done like ancestry items and look back and you know you um, have like German descent or Irish descent or what have you, um, you can look up like your family crest. Maybe your last name means something and you can look up um, to see what your family crest is. So I would do that with your parents, you know, but that's just an example of how, you know, things are different. The one example that I felt like was a good way to show that you might see every day or you might not even know is about like Maryland. So our state has a shield and this is what it looks like. Oops. Um, this is what it looks like here. I don't know if I can zoom in, but um, this is the shield of the state seal of Maryland. And, you know, what does it look like? So it has two people here. One, they call it a farmer, and then one they call a fisherman. And, you know, it has some other things in there. There's a crown there and some flags. So that's something that, you know, you're watching this. You're maybe, maybe you're not, maybe you're not from Maryland, but if you're from Maryland, you know, this is your state seal. If you're coming from another council in the United States, you know, look up your state and see if you can find a symbol or the flag or the seal or something like that. So for this requirement, I'm not gonna necessarily do it with you, but um, you know, one is like your den shield, but if again, if you're not meeting with your den, maybe you could um, work with your family and determine like maybe your family has a shield and you can talk about your family name and what does that shield look like. Now here for personal, you might wanna create your own, you know, um, it could be anything like, I'll go back here for a second. You may wanna make a shield that's a circle maybe even a square, you know, anything you want, a triangle, something kind of fun. Um, so here I want you to take the time to kind of make your own shield. Um, and then, you know, maybe there's things that are close to you. Maybe you have a favorite animal, like a dog or a cat, or, you know, what does it mean? What do you think of yourself? Like, what are some of your favorite things? So you might want to put that in your shield so it's meaningful. So you can do that um, here on your worksheet. Or maybe if you're really creative, you may be able to get some like um, cardboard or poster board and kind of cut out and glue down some fun things. That'd be really cool. And then some of these other things, unfortunately, we won't really get to talk about a whole lot because they're really applicable if you're meeting with your den mate. So it's about um, an obstacle course and participating in that obstacle course. But like I said, maybe if you're able to meet, you could do it virtually or you could do it with your family. Um, the other fun thing you could do is with some recycled items, maybe you could get some boxes, you know, if mom and dad have had things shipped to their house or maybe even you, um, or water bottles, you know, all sorts of kind of recycled things and you can build a castle and that would be really, really fun. So I think we've done all our requirements. So just to kind of wrap up and go back. So with the lions, 
you had to do, yep, all this. So we talked about the scout sign. So let's, let's recap and go back through that. So the scout sign looks like this. Oops. I'll stop sharing. So the scout sign, it looks like this. It's the two ears, looks like a wolf but you hold it way up. I'm sitting down, so I can't really show you, but you're gonna put your hand up and that's a scout sign. But again, it looks just like this, like a little wolf ears. So then, just gonna refresh myself here. So that was the scout sign and the Cub Scout motto. So the Cub Scout motto is do your best, just like here on my screen, my Zoom background here. Which one am I going? This one, um, do your best. Um, that's the Cub Scout motto, but then on your car, don't forget that there's an overall scout model and it says be prepared. And that's for the situation we thought we talked about, like if you were going camping and the weather looked really good, but you want to be prepared in case it rains. So you're going to pack your rain jacket. Um, that was that. And then the salute. So the salute is just like the Cub Scout sign, except you're going to put your fingers together and you're going to push it go right up to your eyebrow, just like that. So that's the Cub Scout sign. And like I said, if you're wearing a hat, you would do it to the brim of your hat. Um, and then in the Good Nights with the Tigers, we talked about the 12 points of the Scout Law. Again, that's on your card too. So we can talk about that again. Remember a Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Now, one thing that we did not talk about, and it's not on either worksheet, but it's something that's really important too, is our scout oath. You might, we might go over this maybe in one of the other adventures. I'm not sure if the wolves have it, but the scout oath is also on your card and it's on your coin, which is really, really helpful. So the scout oath, let's talk about that. So it says, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. I'm gonna quickly see if maybe I could find that for you. We could talk about that. So what is, so that ties into kind of what we've already talked about, right? So I will do my best. Um, that's just saying you're going to put your best foot forward. You're going to do the best you can in any situation, whether you're playing a game or doing a craft or playing a game. Um, and then it talks about obeying the scout law. And we talked about the scout law today. Those are the 12 points. It's on the other side of the coin or again on your card. And we talked about particularly the, um, the point brave. And then, of course, help other people at all times. So I think we've covered everything from our adventures. I have to admit, I know mine is probably not the most fun, but it's really the foundation of scouting. And I, don't, I know you're going to have much more adventures that you have in your box. Um, so I hope you have a great time watching the other videos and doing all the fun things that's in your box. And, you know, we were really sad that we had to cancel day camp. I know I said that in the beginning. Um, and we're really looking forward to planning a fantastic 2021 day camp. All of us are, um, you know, already trying to plan and plan out a fun time. We're going to go back to doing down the farm theme again. So it'd be super fun. Um, so we just hope that you have a great rest of your summer and we really can't wait to see you again. Um, have a great time and have a great time on your next adventure and we'll talk to you again. Bye guys.